When getting into gong for brewing, Chinese tea, teapots, and the like, there are two clays you're most likely to hear about, yixing zisha and jian shui zitao. We won't get into which clay is better or worse for your tea, as that's a long, subjective discussion for another time, with no real clear answers. We will, however, go over some of the primary differences between the two. To start, the sources for these clays are quite far apart. The town of Yixing, where Zisha comes from, is located close to the east coast of China, on the edge of Taihu Lake. Meanwhile, Jianshui, the home of Zitao, is a small town located in the southwest province of Yunnan, not far from the border with Vietnam. With thousands of kilometers between these two sources, there are bound to be some differences in mineral composition as well. Exact mineral compositions can be a bit difficult to compare, as Yixing Zisha has many subcategories that have their own variation, but both clays are high in iron and produce a wide range of colors. Yixing Zisha can include red juni, purple zini, orange jiangponi, white, yellow, or gray duanni, and many other subcategories. Similarly, Zitao ore has five common colors, which when mixed into clay, generally fall into white clay and red clay. The final color of a teapot made from red clay can vary depending on the oxidization level, ranging from red to black. Another major compositional difference between them is the grain density. With Zisha having a lower grain density than the more refined Zitao, this aspect also affects the durability and structural strength of the final product. This difference in grain density leads to the next point, how they're made. The traditional handmade methods for both of these types of clay are quite different. Jianshui Zitao is almost always hand-thrown and wheeled. Yixing Zisha, on the other hand, is typically slab-built. This means that flat pieces of Zisha are manually formed into the shape of a teapot, either by hand entirely or with the assistance of a mold to make the process more consistent and a bit easier. There can certainly be exceptions to this, but these are the traditional and typical methods. Since Jianshui clay has to be wheeled, it's unusual to find any square-shaped pots or sharp angles on them. Yixing teapots, however, can be formed into round, square, or just about any other shape imaginable. Both clays are fired at high temperatures, however the range can differ. As we already mentioned, Yixing Zisha has quite a few subcategories of clays. These clays come from different areas or layers in the mine, and due to their own compositions can require different firing temperatures, which range from 1000 to about 1200 degrees Celsius. The firing temperature affects not only the final color of the teapot, but the porosity as well. Jianshui Zitao, however, has a much tighter firing range, at about 1120 to 1180 degrees Celsius. Price-wise, teapots made from either of these clays can be affordable or luxuriously expensive, based on a number of factors. When it comes to Jianshui Zitao, the price range is a little bit tighter. Jianshui teapots don't reach as low a price as some mass-produced Yixing teapots, due to the difficulty in developing an industrialized method of processing the clay. This is also a positive though, as it means buying a Jianshui teapot means getting Jianshui clay. On the high end, both clays can fetch a pretty penny depending on the artistry and workmanship. The more developed industry in Yixing takes it to another level though, with some potters being recognized as nationally famous artists and pushing their work into the tens of thousands of US dollars. Clay scarcity is another factor that comes into play. While resources for Jianshui clay are far from being exhausted, most of the original mines for Yixing clay have been closed or heavily restricted. Fortunately, many Yixing potters still hold a sizable cache of these sought-after clays, but the limited availability makes them more precious. This is merely a brief summary of some of the differences and similarities between these two clays, not necessarily a fully exhaustive list. All of these differences can be explored in much more detail and much deeper, but subscribe and like, and perhaps we can dig into this more in the near future.